Hello everyone, Christina here. Welcome to another live stream here at my YouTube channel. Today's live stream is going to be a little bit different. I'm trying out a couple of things that I don't have much experience with, but I know you guys appreciate seeing these kind of try as we go type of live streams. So here we go. Today I'm going to be trying out the Spellbinders Better Press for the first time. They sent this to me back when it was first released and I just, I think it, I think it may have been right before holiday card series. I can't remember. Anyway, there were reasons why I never got to it. And then, um, yeah, so here we are. I'm intrigued by it. Thought I'd try it out for the first time. I've watched a few videos, but it was also like days ago and I did it, but we're going to try to, you know, fly by the seat of our pants and make this work. I'm also going to use watercolor paper with it instead of Spellbinders Better Press paper, which I've heard actually gives you the best results. So I have no clue if it's going to work. So uh, let's try it out. <clears throat> if you just joined, um, I did update the title of this live stream and I put the supplies down below what I'm gonna be trying. So if it says anything other than trying out the Better Press or whatever, Go ahead and hit that refresh button or close out the video and open it again and you should get the most updated info down below hello everyone in the chat i'm i'm hoping some of you have used the better press because <laughs> i'm i'm going by i like i have no clue <laughs> we're just gonna try it out i'm gonna open this up it's gonna be a little noisy for a minute getting everything out of the packaging. Okay. All right, so from what I understand, the Better Press should be really easy to use. <laughs> I watched Jennifer McGuire's video and she made it look really easy. So let's hope, right? Okay, so the first thing that Jennifer did was she took these little shims and I want to say she just stuck them underneath. I don't know if I'll need them or not. Okay. And then I'm assuming you want, yeah, okay. You want the A7, A2, you want those to line up. And then when it goes through the die cutting machine, it will compress this down and that's what actually prints it. Carissa said, you're going to have no issues with this. I hope so. We'll see because I mean, I have been known to mess things up on live stream. So, okay, so here are the designs that I was considering. And um, I think I'm just gonna go with this one. We're gonna keep it really simple. I'm hoping it works out. This is the a note from me to you press plate. I got this from simonsthestamp.com. I ordered it last week. It came sometime this weekend. I was out of town. Um, and so I just got home and I picked up the mail this morning. I'm like, ooh, the better press stuff. So here we are. So this is the plate. And I, you know, here we go. All right. So this is like magnetic. Oh yeah, that does, that works great. Okay. So the sizing of it, I think I actually want to do an A7 card. So, um, I'm like picturing my card here, A7. I want this pretty in the center with the words, you know, pretty spot on there. That looks great to me. I have no clue. I'm gonna prep the, let's see, I'm gonna prep my paper now. So this is going to go on here like this. So I'm going to lift it up, turn it this way, and I'm going to be attaching my paper on this side. Like I said, I'm going to do watercolor paper. We'll see how this works out. Um, has anyone in the chat, have anyone, has anyone used watercolor paper? I'm seriously wondering because generally watercolor paper is nice and thick and cotton. I'm using this Artistry by Alta New pre-cut five by seven. This is their hot pressed watercolor paper. It's a little smoother than the cold press. I'm hoping that helps me and Jennifer had the spell binders yellow tape. So that's what I'm going to go with. Carissa, you have used it. Does it work well? 
I'm hoping it works well. I figure most like the paper that um, Spellbinders sells is like a thick, nice cotton paper, and a lot of watercolor papers are, you know, have those same properties. So, oh, Jennifer says yes. I think it's better. Oh, okay. I'm intrigued. By the way, I'm going to be doing an envelope with today's card. So, if you would like to have your address used for the envelope, um, use that mail art. Uh, address or mail. I'm trying to can't even talk today. The address submission link that's down in the video description, and you can put your address on there, and possibly we will use your address today. Feel free to use a PO box, a business address, like whatever you'd like. That is really hard to see. Hold on, with my black mat, I'm gonna put some white paper underneath. Just so I mean, yes, it's gonna help you see what I'm doing, but really, I can't see what I'm doing. There we go. All right, I had it pretty close. All right, so I actually don't need pieces of tape quite that big. And I'm not, you know, this design is not gonna be anywhere near the corner, so I don't have to worry about it. I probably could actually just use a couple, couple pieces of tape, but that's okay. Okay, so now I believe this is, this was like the, ink pad that they sent me. This was like a prototype of the Better Press. So I think this is just black. I guess I could just test it really quick on a post-it note. Oh yeah, that's, mm, that kind of looks like navy. In fact, my ink pad might be a little dry, so we'll make sure I ink this up really well. Okay, so then you're supposed to like, oh yeah, my ink pad's really dry. This is not good. Well, crap. I did get some new inks when I did my thing. So maybe we'll do this thunder, this gray that's down here. Um, it won't be quite as dark as I was hoping, but that's okay. Sounds like I need to, oh wow, that's really, really solid. I've also heard that you can use some other um, inks with this. Like I watched Jennifer's video and she used a bunch of different inks. So I guess I could try it with a different black ink. Um, has anyone tried it with a different black ink before? <laughs> I'm sure people have, but if you have experience with that today, let me know. Um, Andrea says, I know the better press ink doesn't transfer directly to the paper. Well, at least the ones I got didn't. Oh, interesting. All right. Well, let's try, let's try presumably some ink pads that are newer than the one I have. And this is the color thunder. Okay. Oh, hello. It's really not, yikes. That is really dry. Is this supposed to be that dry? Jennifer's looked really juicy. What in the world? Okay, well. See, this is what happens when I'm trying. <laughs> I'm trying other things. Okay, so I'm gonna do some watercolor paper over the top. So I need to use a waterproof ink. I have no clue if this is gonna work. I'm just gonna use my old standby, some VersaFine, and we're gonna try it. We'll see. Oh yeah, that's totally transferring much better. Oh my word, I don't even have my die cutting machine ready. This is gonna be a disaster. Okay. This is just a trial run. I'm gonna do this. And I don't have my die cutting machine over here, but I do have it. I just have to move it over. Okay. And then you just run it through. Okay, here we go. That didn't seem like it did anything. Did I do anything? That was a little too easy. Carefully picking this up. Oh, I am pleasantly surprised. That is lovely. <laughs> Can you guys see this? Oh my word. I totally understand Jennifer's excitement when she used her better press for the first time. That's gorgeous. 
Wow. Now I want all the better press designs. <laughs> okay, so my thought for this particular, oh my word, this is, now we know why people are like, yeah, you get like ink everywhere. Yeah, that's true. Wow. Well, I mean, it's not budging, so that's good. Maybe I'll do, maybe I'll do a couple. Maybe I'll do a few of them. All right, I'm just gonna take this off the corners. I'm just gonna leave the tape there because I can just reuse it. Wow. Oh my word, I am so impressed with that. Okay, let's get another uh, sheet of watercolor paper. <laughs> Molly, oh, I guess I have to get one of these now. Uh, apparently, I have been sleeping on this. I am not one of those like early adopters of things. Yeah, ultrasound cleaner, yes, I do have that, I'll clean that. I'll start cleaning it with that after here. I'm done here. This was so easy. I'm like, why only do one? For real, do like many. Magnets are so great. Snaps right in place. Roll this through. Oh my word, is it really that easy? world okay it's like flawless that is so beautiful okay I'm gonna stop at just these two because we need to move on um because I have a feeling that what I want to do with this might take a minute <laughs> so um yeah I'm gonna move on from that but I've got two perfect designs ready to go wow okay so that was the first thing that I wanted to try today. Let's um, let's get these, let's get this cleaned up. Someone said um, ultra clean stamp cleaner works well. So I'm gonna grab this. I'm just using the Simon Says Stamp one. And this stuff is so oily and messy and I hate it all over my hands. So I'm gonna use two baby wipes. I'm gonna spray it into the baby wipes and then well, it's taking it off, that's for sure. It's kind of making a mess of everything else that's here, but it is cleaning it, so that's good. All right, I'm just gonna try to clean this as much as I can. And then I'll, oh, it is cleaning it up really well. Good call, Molly. Cleaning it up as much as I can, and then I will lift up that plate and then clean this gray mat, the, the magnetic part. Um, Bobby is asking, is it only just stamping or embossing as well? It is pressing it in a little bit. Um, and you can, um, actually you can use like no ink on your plate and it will just push it into the paper. And I think you want a really soft, thick paper for that because it, um, then it will really show. Okay. I'm going to continue cleaning this. Well, it's not perfect, but that's okay. Really, no one sees this anyway on your project, right? Wow. I'm really impressed with better press. Go spellbinders. Okay. All right. I'm going to put the better press to the side. And I got a few other better press things. I got this hello plate, which I think would be so great, especially for what I'm doing today. There's this one that does a whole background. And then this one that has a bunch of small greetings, which I thought would be so fun too. So I've got quite a few things to try later, but for now, we're gonna set this aside and move on. 
Okay. Put my stamp cleaner away. All right, so we have these gorgeous note cards. I love them so much. So I'm going to do just like really simple watercolor flowers. Well, I was going to do watercolor flowers. Maybe I should stamp them and then color them. I don't know. I was thinking of just doing some freeform flowers, trying to keep it simple. Yeah, let's do that. We'll just do some freeform flowers and keep it really simple today. So I'm going to paint both of these at the same time. I'm probably not going to be painting all the way to the edge, but even if I was, it's not a big deal. I could just trim it down a little bit. Oh, was it Andrea that said about the Ultra Clean? I thought it was Molly. Sorry for the mix up, ladies. All right, just getting these all taped down. So I did my watercolor flowers in a video a couple weeks ago right for Valentine's Day and I just loved them so much. I thought they were just so fun. So we are returning to that today. I also found another watercolor artist on Instagram. Seriously, Instagram algorithm knows me. They know I'm going <laughs> to... I'm going to be like, oh my gosh, it's so beautiful. Um, anyway, I, I think her Instagram name is Colors by Sue. And I was so taken with her cute cat watercolors with flowers and all that, that I went to her Etsy shop and like bought some of her original paintings that I'm going to hopefully put up in my office. I will show them to you. Hold on. They're so cute. And when you see them, you'll know why I had to get them. And you might be cr like thinking like, why would you buy cards by someone else when you can make them? Y'all, I support all artists. And if they're doing cute things with cats and flowers, <laughs> you know I'm gonna buy it. Okay, look at this. Look how cute. Now, my friend Jana has kind of like a brownish tabby cat that looks like this cat, so. I think when's, when's Jana's birthday? Didn't she just have it? Anyway, I'm gonna save it for Jana's birthday. Or maybe I'm just gonna give it to Jana when it's not her birthday and just gonna be like, hey, this looks like your cat, Gracie. You know, awesome. And it is, yes, coloresbysue.etsy.com. How cute is that? Okay, stop it. It's like she knows me. It's like she knows me, right? I mean, how, how did she like reach into my head? <laughs> so, um, Darla, I bought them at her Etsy shop. You can see it right here. Colorsbysue.etsy.com. Okay, and then this last one, aren't those flowers so cute? So I was thinking I could even do some like inspired by flowers for these cards with those type of flowers. Cause they look like pretty they could be really fun because they're a little funky and whimsical. They don't have to be exact. So I could probably get some flowers that look a little bit like that. Just as an homage to Sue and her amazing art. Isn't that cute? Okay, the prints I got, okay, stop it, okay. First of all, she has amazing flowers. Look at this. And this is an original. I'm like, all of that detail, how in the world so beautiful. I think she might even have an Instagram reel, reel while she's painting this one. Like she shows how she painted it. I just love her illustration style. The colors are so great. It's amazing. All right. And then I got this one, which I mean, hello. <laughs> They're all silver tabby cats. So I'm basically just going to have a little shrine two colors by sue with all of her cute cat 
paintings. I'm like, seriously, like, come on. Okay, and then this one is on her Instagram. Stop it. Stop it. It's so dang cute. They're Christmas kitties. So I'm totally gonna have to get this framed and put it up in my craft room during Christmas time. Like, stop it. And I love this like cat up here that looks a little, a little perturbed. That's totally selfie. That's totally selfie. <laughs> Uh, isn't it so cute? I love it so much. Okay, so Colors by Sue, and I wanna say Colors by Sue is her Instagram name as well. Um, I'll add a link to her Instagram and her Etsy shop when I'm done here. I can't do it right now, and I really wasn't planning on like showing that, but then I decided I wanted to do some of her flowers, kind of inspired by those flowers. So, all right, so I'm gonna keep her little birthday card over here as inspiration for some fun flowers. And it looks like she uses like a really tiny itty bitty brush to put in all the details on the flowers. Isn't that fun? So cool. Okay, so I did use a waterproof black ink for the better press printing here. So that's good to go. And now I'm gonna go grab my watercolors, which are in a drawer. And I also need to grab some water. Fill up my little water cup here. Good to go. Okay. Got my water over here. I'm gonna be using my Magello Mission Gold paints today. Thank you, Amanda, for those links. For those watching live, Amanda, as well as Andrea and Dana are my moderators here, and they're so lovely. They're so kind. I just, you know, a while back, I noticed that they were coming to most of my lives, and I was like, hey, would you just be a moderator? And they were all so kind to, to be, yes, absolutely, and they're so helpful, and they just like to keep the, the chat a happy place. So we love our mods. We love them. No, do cats and flowers? Ooh, that is not a bad idea. <laughs> I could paint my own type of cat. That's not a bad idea. Do some cats and flowers, why not? I like this idea. All right, hold on, I just gotta get rid of my die cutting machine that was hanging out on my chair. Cause I need to sit down for all this. Okay. Okay, this is so dang cute. All right, picking my watercolor brush. I'm gonna start out with a size four and get some paper towels. Oh no, is Jennifer live right now too? Oh crap, I didn't realize she was. Sorry, Jennifer. <laughs> I should just call her and then it'll be like live in, liveception live inception and we'll be in each other's videos. That'd be funny. Okay. So I'm trying to think here. I think I'm just going to do flowers. Trying to add in a cat right now is sort of stressing me out because I wasn't planning on it. So I needed to like mentally prepare myself for that. <laughs> okay. So it looks like, it looks like she probably painted, you know, these flowers that are sort of in the front. She painted those first. So um, let's just do some, some yellow flowers. I'm going to get a nice yellow shade going. I don't need a whole lot of it because these are going to be a little bit, in fact, I might even grab a little bit of that pink, get a little bit of an orangey yellow. I love that. All right. And then let's just, we'll just do a little little wonky shape. Remember, we're going to add the details after the fact, so it's not a big deal if this is not looking the best at the moment. All right, I'm going to add a little more yellow right here, get a little more of that paint going. And I'm going to add another little flower down here. Put a little more water in that because I don't like how 
dark it is at the moment. But you know what though, we like the color variation, so why not? All right, coming over to the other one. I think I'm gonna do just similar, similar vibes just because, you know, why not? Okay. Add another one right here. Y'all, I wish I had more control over when the ads, when YouTube puts ads in my lives. I mean, I think they do have that option that you can like manually add in where the ad will be. Oh, I'm a one woman show over here. I don't have enough. I don't have enough uh, mental focus <laughs> to do that. Okay, so it looks like she had some like other, some red flowers that were in front too. So let's get, let's get a nice pink shade. Sorry, you can't even see what I'm doing over here. I'm gonna get a, let's just make it, mix a little more pink into that so it's more red. Okay, and I'm just gonna be pulling color from that right there. Let's do, let's do a red flower down here. And it looks like these have a little bit of a white center to them. So I'm gonna, in fact, the yellow ones I do too, but I wasn't thinking. Um, I'm gonna add just a, little circular red flower right here that's gonna become like a rose of some sort. So I'll come over here and add that. These are sort of just like, almost like little pansy looking flowers. Okay, all right, and then I think I need to add another little rose type shape. So let's add it, let's just do another little one right here. Okay. We need some sort of something kind of like right in here, I think, just for composition sake. So she has like some more, uh, like more orangey flowers. So let's, let's add a little bit more yellow to this over here. I'm just getting a little more yellow and red. So it's a little more of an orange shade now. And we'll just do like a, a little orange flower. And any weird like gaps or whatever in the design I can always add greenery and leaves. Okay. All right, I'm gonna hit this with my heat tool just so then I can start adding in some other elements around the flowers.
Okay. All right. So I need a nice green shade. I'm going to reference my little swatch chart that I have in my, in my paints. I think this green looks great. So I'm going to mix up a little puddle of that green. And we want it to be, you know, similar to how she has on hers. It's kind of like a lighter green and then she uses a darker version of that green to add detail. So that's what I'm going to do. Okay, so she also goes right up next to where those flowers are. So I'm gonna try to do that. So she kind of has a circular leaf shape. She goes up right up next to them and then paints it in. I get more of that paint on my palette. Okay, and I'll do another one right here. This one's a little easier because I can't see where the edge of that yellow flower is. Okay, let's do one. Let's do one right here, just off the edge of this one. I'll do another one kind of right here. I love that these letters for the greeting are just, looks like they're just floating right on top. It's so great. All right. And I'm also going to grab a little bit of yellow. She's got a little more yellow and a couple of leaves here. So take a cue from that. Add a little more yellow to my green. Just for a different shade. And then I'll add some more kind of leaf shapes. That one's not quite as yellow as I'd hope, so I'm going to mix even more yellow in. All right, and I'll do one right over here. Okay, and then I feel like I need one more flower right, right there. So since I still have that orange mixed up, I'm just going to add a small one right down here. Just kind of little blobby flowers at this point. <laughs> okay. I'll dry these real quick and I'll add more green over here. For those who missed it, I am going to do some envelopes for these cards today. So if you would like to possibly receive these envelopes or these cards, um, go submit your address uh, at the form that's in the video description. It can be a business address, it can be a PO box, it can be anything, or if you're comfortable with your home address, that works as well. Just know that the address will be shown on camera. 
Okay, getting more of that green so I can do the other card. Just getting that water down quite a bit. Then I'm going to start adding these leaves in the same spot. Trying the best I can to not overlap the colorful flowers, but sometimes that happens. Okay. Looks like we have one right here. And we've got another one right down here. Mostly just like painting circles, you know? And like circle shapes. All right, I'm gonna add a little yellow or a lot yellow to my green to get that nice green shade. And we'll put that right over here. Okay. Okay, I'm gonna soften this line out a little bit. Hit that with my heat tool. Okay, so now I'm gonna come in and start adding more of these details on top, and I think it, it's gonna to come together really quickly after that. Looks like for the center of a lot of the flowers, it's just like a nice red. So I'm gonna get a nice red going, maybe make it a little more pinky than red. Okay, and let's see here. It's just kind of like just a, just a little center. Okay, and on the red ones, it was just a little bit of a darker center as well. I'm gonna use that same red that I'm using for these centers. I'm gonna use that for adding like a little swirl on my roses, although I'm gonna to switch to a smaller brush. Let's switch to, that was a four, I'm gonna to switch to a zero. All right, and I'm also gonna move my board so that I can get to this area up here better. And basically, it looks like she just, you know, me for these, it's like a full on swirl. So I'm gonna do that. I think it's such a cute look. A little swirl. Okay. 
There we go. She's also got one that looks a little more rose-like. So maybe I'll do that for this one where it's kind of like, you know, like the center starts more near the top of the, of the shape. And kind of like just C, C shapes going around. Perfect. So it's kind of just little, little C shapes. Okay. Alrighty, <clears throat> and then looks like she has like a couple, they've got, she's got two flower types. There's one that are just plain and then ones that have like lines coming from the center. So let's do, let's see. I think I'm going to keep this one plain. So I'll do lines from the center on this one so just using that same red, I probably could change it to an orange, to be honest. Let's do that. Let's make it more of an orange. Now, Sue's are very more precise than mine. I'm just going for a more free form. Okay, and then let's see here. I think I want these two down here to be the striped kind as well. Okay. All right. All right. For the green, I'm gonna. I think I'm gonna keep this red one plain as well. But for the green details on the leaves, just mixing up a little bit of a darker green. And then she does kind of like a squiggly kind of concentric circles. So I think that's kind of a fun idea. So I'm gonna do that. So just like that. And she does have some that are plain, so I'll leave some plain, but
Okay, um, let's see. I'll do squiggly lines on this one. I think I'll do squiggly lines on this one as well. Just looking at her. Oh, she did like some dark leaves too. I missed that. Should we add them in? Let's add them in. I think it does need like a little bit of a darker. Actually, no, let's not. We'll leave them. But I do like the the darker centers and in, in the flowers. So I am gonna grab just kind of a darker, more neutral brown. Get a little bit of that going. <clears throat> and then it's like she did just like a little bit of that darker brown just at the bottom of the center of each flower. And I'm going to add whites to the center of the flowers so that I forgot to have centers. I'll do that in a minute. I'm going to be adding stems or vines to connect the flowers. So no worries if there's a flower that's just hanging out by itself. Okay. I'm gonna grab kind of like a yellowy ochre color. And I am going to add a little bit of brown to it so it's a little more dark. And then I'm just going to start kind of connecting these. And yeah, I can even have some little buds coming off. That's what she did as well. And so she had like some little little leafy things with buds on the end. Oh, I need to grab that one up there. I'll do that in a minute. Let's see, is that all I want to add? That might be all I want to add.
Okay. Keeping it simple. Hi, Sharon B. This is totally live. <laughs> yes, this is live. Okay, I need to add the dark green up here that I missed. Okay, and then I'm going to take a white gel pen and I'm just going to add in those spots. Oh, I need to do dark down here too. I forgot. I forgot there are a couple dark spots. It's hard doing two of these at the same time. have dark centers for all of them. I do. Okay. Maybe this is my heat tool because I'm going to add white gel pen on top. Okay. <clears throat> and then like the center of this flower doesn't have any of that white. So I'm just going to use a white gel pen and just add that white back in. Same over here. <laughs> add more of the white right here. And also down here. Okay, so um, I don't know if you can tell, but she's added just a little bit of a gold accent like on these plain leaves. So I'm going to do the same. Where did my Christmas color palette go for my gold? Because that is my favorite gold. Here it is. All right, so my... Yuli watercolors. So this is the Christmas. Uh, they're not, I guess, a chrome kind of mic. I don't know what exactly, but they're gorgeous. That's all I know. Okay. So I'm just going to drop in a little bit of water on my gold shade that I'm going to use. I'll use my size for bigger brush for mixing in that water into the gold paint and then I'll switch to the tiny brush to add the details. I love doing like wonky whimsical flowers like this because it's very forgiving. All right, so I'm just mixing that in. until I have a nice consistency. All right, switching to my smaller brush. Pick up some of that paint. And then I'll just bring it over here and add some dots like she did on the leaves these plain leaves. So cute. This is basically like an ode to colors by Sue. <laughs> the minute I found her Instagram, I was like, I need to have some of her paintings. And that's when I went to order. I mean, she shipped them same day so fast. I forgot to do the green squiggles on that one. Bring back my other watercolor palette. Grab a little bit of that green. Okay. All right. So I think I'm gonna be done with those. Super fun, love that. 
And now we're gonna get into just a really simple envelope design. You're gonna die how simple it is. Um, and for those of you who have a Cricut machine, seriously, I recently learned how to do this. People have been doing it for like ages, but um, I just recently learned how to do this and it, I was so excited because it kind of opened up a whole world of like envelope addressing. <laughs> so I'm gonna walk you through how to use your Cricut to put white gel pen on your envelope so you can get like a precise font. So if any, like if you don't like your handwriting, you can do it this way. Okay. Such a cute card design. And all I have to do is, um, what's the word? adhere these to some card bases. Okay. Let's adhere these to card bases really quick. So I need two five by seven card bases. I didn't even check to make sure that that was all dry. Let's just hit this really quick. some Tombow Extreme Adhesive on the back of my watercolor papers. And then check the card base, the way, it's, the way it opens. Gorgeous, works perfectly. again. Okay. Okay. So now I'm going to pick out some envelopes to go with these card designs. Um, I think black would look really great. Um, let's see, do I want to do black? Yeah, let's do black. Why not? Um, once again, if you're just started watching, I'm going to be selecting two addresses that are submitted during the live today. So if you would like to submit your address for mail art, uh, know that your address will be shown on camera, but you can just go to that form that's down in the video description. Okay. <clears throat> Let's pick out some addresses. Why not? Okay, I'm just I've just gotta pull up the form on my computer here. <laughs> okay, looks like there's quite a few who have submitted their address. All right, how about? Laura Vance. Laura Vance is the first one. Let me write this down. Laura J. Vance. In Zanesville, Zanesville, Ohio. Um, <clears throat> Laura, you should be in the chat, I'm assuming. Oh, there you are, I see you in the chat. Um, make sure I have your address correctly written down here. If you have need to make any changes, let me know. All right, the second person, how about, let's see, how about, 
Victoria Hoggard in, uh, looks like she's in the UK. Okay. Oh, I'm going to run out of post-it note space. Gonna have to extend my post it note. Okay. I'm not sure exactly how to format this address because <laughs> there's so many, like, you know, I just don't know. Okay, most of the time when I do an international address, <clears throat> I will go to Google, <clears throat> sorry, go to Google and like type in the address in Google Maps and then it formats it for me. So I'm gonna do that really quick. <clears throat> I also could just ask Victoria, sorry, I'm losing my voice. I could also just ask Victoria exactly how to do it, but <clears throat> unfortunately in the comments, it would be hard to, to do like spaces. Okay, so go maps. I'm just gonna hurry and do this real quick. Oh good, that is your correct address. Perfect. Let's see. Let's see. <laughs> Newbury. Okay. I think I found it. So I don't think I necessarily need the, the Ber Berkshire, Berkshire. Is that correct? Okay. So it would actually be, I mean, according to Google. Oh, it's giving me a different, okay. You are, and then. Okay, does that work? So I need to have the, the Berkshire. Okay, is that on its own line? <clears throat> Let me know, so is it just like, it's just on its own line right here? Is it just on its own line? And then Newbury can be on the line with the postal code. Get rid of Newbury? Okay, she's saying yes it is. Okay, we'll do the four lines. Okay, I'm gonna need my my, my uh, keyboard here now. Okay, so now I'm going to go to, um, let's see here. <laughs> Camera. Perfect. All right, so here's my lovely little <clears throat> Cricut design screen, right? So I already have this set up so that I can do this. So I'm just gonna select this and type in each person's address. So we're starting with Laura Vance, 6845. Oh, just kidding, I need this in caps. Heritage, run, drive. Rainsville. Ohio, 43701. Okay, 
So basically in my, let me see if I can, if I make this smaller. Okay, good. Now you guys can see it closer up. So um, what I've done is in my Cricut Design Space, I've made a rectangle that's the exact size of my envelope, which happens to be seven and one quarter by five and one quarter. And then I have the um, text that I want. And uh, when I added the text, I just changed the operation to pen. And for the pen, I selected, let's see, we're gonna go to gel. No, that really matters. It's just gonna write whatever I want. But um, for the style, I made sure that it is writing. And I'm just using the Cricut Sans font. It's already in the software. It should be just fine. But I do wanna make sure that the letter spacing is retained. I want those letters kind of spaced out. All right, and I'm also going to select both of those and align them centered. Perfect, okay. So I don't want, okay, <laughs> so I'm going to select these and, oh, just kidding, I forgot one thing. This rectangle, I have the operation as basic cut. I'm not gonna cut it, I just am pretending it's like that so that I have the spacing right, okay. I'm gonna select those two together and I'm going to attach them so they don't move around. And then I will hit make. And now I can move this around, right? So I'm actually going to move it down to about, I want this top left corner to be two inches over and four inches down. Remember that because we're going to uh, line up the envelope in that exact spot. I'm gonna do this a couple of times cause we're doing this twice. So like no big deal. All right, so now I'm going to, hit continue and it says, please connect your maker. It's thinking it's connecting. Connect please. Thank you. You can select whatever cardstock you want. Wait, what is this Amber saying? Having a house name makes it an extra line again. What? I don't know. Okay, Collect <laughs> selecting that. It says to load the black pen, blah, 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 blah. Okay. So now I'm going to, well, it's supposed to connect to my lovely little, there we go, look at that. We can see my Cricut now, Ta da let me get that centered. Okay, so actually, before we get to that, well, yeah, before we get to the Cricut, I'm gonna show you how I'm setting up my mat. Okay, so, I've got my standard grip mat and I've got my two black envelopes. I'm going to select one. Remember I had it come down to the four and then the two at the top. I'm going to open my envelope and I'm going to put the top corner of where it's folded right at that spot. Get it lined up and then just press that down. This is the standard grip mat, but I've used it quite a bit, so it should pull up easily. All right, so I've got my mat ready. I'm gonna switch back to my Cricut. And I'm going to, before I even load it, hello, hi everyone. Before I even load it, I have this handy dandy adapter. I actually bought it off, off Etsy. I've got a link down below. Um, and this is for the Secura Koi, not Secura Koi, just Secura Jelly Roll. You can kind of see it's got some like, little letters on it and stuff. All right, so I'm gonna replace that. So I'm gonna pop out the adapter, the Cricut adapter, if I can get it out, there we go. Pop that out. I'm gonna take this one and I wanna use my jelly roll and you have to really get it in there. Okay, is it hitting the right one? I was doing it earlier and I really had to like, there we go. It has to kind of snap. I hope, you heard, I hope you heard that. Then you're gonna place it in and make sure that the top of the adapter is flush with that carriage. All right, it's all good. But we don't want it to cut around that rectangular envelope. So we're gonna take out the regular blade. Okay, it's gonna act like it's cutting it, but obviously there's no blade there, so it's not gonna work. All right, I'm gonna load it into my Cricut. 
It'll load in and start thinking. And this is just magical. I'm like, are you kidding me? I love this. <laughs> All right, so it's still thinking. And then at one point, my little play button is now blinking. You can't see it, but it is blinking. So I'm gonna hit that play button. And it's going to start printing my little thing. Ooh, the bottom of the envelope caught right there. That's okay. I don't know if you can even kind of, if you could see it, but it's starting to write all of that. I love this so much. So one of the reasons why I left that rectangle and it has a basic cut on it is because I wanted it to retain the position like on the area where it was going to go. I didn't want to have to eyeball it. This is like magical to me. I'm like, are you kidding me? And I've seriously had this stuff to try this out for like a year. <laughs> and I finally tried it today, like an hour before going live. I'm like, oh, we have to do an envelope today. <laughs> Amanda, I have no idea if the scan and cut to, can do this or not. If it has some sort of pen feature, I would, you know, assume it could. All right, now it's gonna act like it's cutting it. It's like, okay, we've done our pen, we're gonna try to cut it. So it's gonna try to go around the outside edge. And obviously it's not gonna work because there's no bite in there. It's pretending. Da 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 da. Still pretending. Okay. I can just unload it. Ta-da! Oh my word, it's magical. Okay, let me switch cameras. Okay, so you can see how well it did that. I did notice like when I tried this before that the top of the letter T sometimes doesn't get written quite perfectly. So I'm actually going to kind of just Finish that off a little bit. There we go. All right, and then I can peel it up from my mat. I have my envelope all ready to go. Sweet. All right, so I'm gonna do that for my other envelope as well. I'm gonna go ahead and get it ready on the mat. So this top folded corner is going at the two and four. Okay, so that's ready to go. But I'm gonna go ahead and get the address ready to go for get my keyboard back out <laughs> and I'll switch to sharing my screen once again all right and hit done I'm going to come back and I'm just going to detach so I can edit this and we're going to change it to Victoria's address, which we're gonna to have to move around a little bit. Just cause it's gonna be a little too tall for where it's at right now. Okay. Now we decided it was this, right? Why is it not, what is happening? It's like not letting me edit it. What in the world? That was weird. Okay. Okay. Ooh, 
Ooh, Jennifer says if you have a silhouette cameo, you could do the same thing. Do I have to enlarge the text box? No, it adjusts on its own. Okay, so I think that is correct. You know, I want the line spacing a little, a little looser just because it's really tight. Okay, in fact, you know what? I'm gonna move this over so I can kind of get a better idea of what's happening here. Okay. So is that no Newbury before Birch? Okay. It's Newbury. Then the next line is Berkshire or the postcode. Oh, okay. Okay. So is this correct? Victoria, I'm going to wait for you to say like, yes, that is correct. <laughs> exactly like that before I go ahead and, and send this. I'm going to move it down. I'm going to get these centered. Actually, I'll, I'll bring that up just a little bit, actually. Yes. Okay. Perfect. Okay. <laughs> Let's see. All right, so now I'm going to attach these two together and then I'll hit make. And I'm going to move this down to the two and four to this direction, the right here, that two line and also the four line. I'll hit continue. <clears throat> it's connecting to my maker, lovely cardstock. All right, all I have to do is load it over here. So I'm gonna switch back to my Cricut Cam. <laughs> and I'll load my mat that's already been prepared. Press down that bottom really good. And it's gonna do its thing. making sure everything's good. And then now I can just hit the play button and it's going to start writing all of that text. Oh, it caught again, really? At least it's staying stuck to the map. So I can't complain about that. But this is so great. If like you don't like your your handwriting, I mean you could do custom greetings, you could do all sorts of stuff. And my phone that is acting as the cricket cam is moving. So but at least everything's still within the frame, right? So that's good. just going on doing that whole big long address I saw so many people online that were doing this for like wedding address like wedding envelope addressing which I thought was so smart and they were getting like some really fun scripty fonts for the names and things like that So interesting to see what it writes first, you know? All right, it's getting there. I feel like I wanna like move the camera so you can kind of see more down on top of what it's doing. Did I see that? Oh, I gotta move it. I can't let, let it be in the way of the mat. <laughs> Sorry for the shaking. Uh, 
All right, lovely. So now it's gonna pretend to cut. We know it's not really because the blade isn't there. Um, Jenny G, <clears throat> she's wondering, do you know if you can put multiple addresses into a file and then have it just do all of them one right after the other, or do you have to manually enter each address? Um, I would assume you have to man manually enter each address, but you could copy and paste from a separate file. That would speed things up quite a bit. All right, I'm just gonna take my gel pen out really quick. So I can put a cap on it, cap that. I can close up my Cricut too, turn it off. All right. Okay, so here we are, we're back to envelopes and it did the same thing on that T again. Isn't that so weird? Fix that <clears throat> just a little bit. The other tee's a little bit better. I think it's just because it's a gel pen, you know? Okay. I'll peel back the mat. Perfect. Put the protective plastic back on my mat set that aside. Perfect. Okay. So for their names, um, let's do some gold. I'm going to use my Karen deco brush markers wherever they went. Where did you go? I think I have them in a drawer. There they are. Okay. I'll just grab the gold shade. I think that'll work. I have a piece of brown cardstock card I can sort of just. Perfect. I just want to test it out. All right, let's do Lara's first name first. Stephanie says, I have a feeling that the postal system in the UK today won't like that. Um, you know what? I want to say if you just put additional postage on, usually they'll deliver it. You know, like, I don't know. Okay, so I think I want to like practice each name before I actually do it on the envelope. So let's just practice this real quick. Hmm. Okay, how do I want to do this? This pen is not the juiciest. I'll shake it up a little bit. Maybe that'll help. That didn't really help it. Dang it. I want gold. I am discovering because I took a break from using a lot of these supplies, like my Karen markers and different things like that, but a lot of them are just dried up and I keep discovering that. I'm like, okay, well that just tells me I need to be replacing these things more often. I will try a different color and see if that works a little bit better. All right, this one's copper. It's a little better, but I wanted it to be stronger than that. <clears throat> I'm just trying to think in my head, what's the best way to do this? I could do those same Yuli watercolors, but those, uh, especially because they're metallic, they do tend to smear or smudge a little bit. So you have to use like a spray fixative to kind of fix those. So I'm trying just trying to avoid that. Okay. 
Let's see here. Maybe I could just use a regular Deco brush pigments pen. And to go with the cards, let's see here. I want it to match the cards, maybe like a, hmm, maybe like a yellow or even a green. A yellow or a green would be really pretty. We'll just pick out the whole box of nature colors. How about that? Okay, so here are the colors that I could choose from. <clears throat> I think I like this gold shade to be really pretty. Sorry, I'm losing my voice. I was doing the uh, Princess Half Marathon at Disney World this weekend, and it was literally 49 degrees. And I was standing out there from, well, it was basically out in the cold from 3 a.m. until, gosh, like nine, when it had just barely started to warm up. <clears throat> Sadly, I did not finish the marathon. I got to mile eight, and it was so cold that my blood sugar sensor, you know, for my diabetes, stopped working, which made me slightly concerned. So that's when I decided that maybe, you know, and my, my foot, which I had a little injury that I was hoping would be okay. My foot had really started to hurt. And my legs are really hurting, which is not unusual when you're in the middle of a half marathon. But um, I was just starting to get that feeling of like, hey, if I push it even more, I could possibly really injure myself. So I stopped. I was like, no, we're not. Oh, that's much better. And that color looks really pretty with that over there. So we're gonna do that, that one. We're doing the color gold. This is just the regular gold shade. <clears throat> so I ended up stopping the race and I feel really good about that. I think it was the best choice for me at the time. Okay, just wanted to kind of get an idea of what it was going to be to do that. You know what, though? At Disney races, even if you're unable to finish, you still get your medal. So I've got my medal. It's all good. <laughs> all right, I think I'm just going to do that a little bit smaller. In fact, you know what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to add a little bit of pencil and do... The line right there. While I've got my ruler out, might as well do the one over here too. Okay. All right, and I think about right here is where I want it. Ooh, someone said test it on the black first and they were not wrong. I think I need to shake it up first. Wow, what is going on? It's like it's absorbing all of the color. Okay, that's gonna be really annoying. We're going back to the metallics because if the one of those is gonna work better, I think it's gonna be the best choice. I don't like that color. It is a green though. And the green would go with the card. Okay, we'll do that. All right, I'm gonna skip that area because I think it's still wet. 
Oh, so much better. You know, I think I have her address a little low, but that's okay. I'll go back and do that L here in a minute. Um, once the postage is on, it'll, it'll feel better. Or like, you know, the spacing will feel better. Oh yeah, that's that's so much better. All right, is that dry yet? I think it's okay. I'm just like trying to hide the yellow shade that was underneath. Close enough. All right, let's do our other name over here, which is Victoria Hoggard. <clears throat> so I'm just gonna do a quick test run. So I can kind of get an idea of spacing. Okay, that's a very long name. That's gonna give me a good idea of where I need to start though. Okay. getting a little squished over there, but I did it. <laughs> Got a little squished, but that's okay. I probably should have done it in two lines. That's okay. All right. <clears throat> I'm going to add my address. You know what? Just because I don't want it to have any issues getting delivered, I'm going to put my address up here in the top corner. And I'm also going to protect that right there. <laughs> I could have even had my Cricut put the address there. What, Amber? Christina, she'd bring out a calligraphy book? I have no idea what that means. Christina, oh, Christina should bring out a calligraphy book. Oh, I don't know. I don't do enough calligraphy these days. I want to get back into it. <clears throat> I was doing quite a bit of calligraphy and lettering there for a while. And I haven't so much the last little while. I have very, very long list of interests. And I go through phases, you know. Okay. That should be dry now, so I'm going to grab an eraser and just erase that pencil line that I'd added earlier. And we just need some postage for these. All right. 
Alrighty. We need some fun flowers or something, right? Some fun flowers or something to go with with uh, what you've got going over there. So my cards today are very, very thin. There's not gonna be any issue with weight or anything like that. So it's just gonna be the base price for mailing everything. So I'm gonna grab my postage calculator, which is like not even, I don't have a printout of it. That's brilliant, Christina. <clears throat> I'm gonna have to, let's see. Can I print that really quick from my computer here? Let's try. Hold on, I'm just gonna try to, cause I just wanna double check the, I wanna make sure I have the correct postage for, for what I'm mailing, you know? Okay, this computer I'm on basically isn't set up for printing, that's okay. Um, United Kingdom is, Country code five, so I need a dollar fifty-five for that one. Perfect. Okay, I'm just gonna add that right here. Okay, so now I know it's a dollar fifty-five to Victoria. Regular um, sixty-six cents for Lara. Okay, let's zoom out here. Yes, there are international global forever stamps, which I could use, but I think I want to do some fun postage. So we're going to change it up a little bit. All right, those are fun. Hmm. You know what, for Lara's, I'm going to do it by color, because I just need to get to 66. So <clears throat> I'm gonna pick out some flower stamps. I love that. That would be so cute. Wouldn't that be cute up there? We'll just do a bunch of flowers. I know I have lots of flower stamps that I could choose from. Just a bunch of different flower ones from over the years. This one right here for 15 cents. We'll add that one into the mix. Those are really cute too. But I think I want something that's a little bit have that has a little bit of a different look than what I already have selected. Oh, Michelle says, I got one yesterday from Christina. I loved getting it and my employees loved bringing it to me. No one has seen such a beautiful envelope. Oh, that's so sweet. Thank you. I'm so glad it arrived safely. All right, I'm thinking I wanna do this yellow one. And that's definitely enough postage just between these three. I wanna see if I have a little bit of a different shaped stamp that I could use just in case. In fact, you know what? Maybe I'll swap these and I'll do this one instead. And then I'll take this one out and then I can put this one in. Okay. That's pretty cute. But also I think it needs like a solid color stamp. So maybe like a, one of these pink ones back here. I think that could be really pretty. Ooh, maybe like one of these. 
that same, the same type of stamp, but just a different one. Uh, no, I think I like that one. I could also do both of those, which would be really fun. And slide these over. Hmm. This is the hardest part of mail art for me is picking stamps. Because I just want to do all of them, you know? All right, let's go back to the oranges, the orange colors. I have these in, you know, semi rainbow order. I'm not seeing any flowers that are just all predominantly all one color. Ooh, I do love that Georgia O'Keeffe red poppy. Oh, that's fun. I like that. Let's go with that. <clears throat> okay, and then for Victoria, I could do a combination of all that as well. I do like the red poppy. So we'll put that in. But we are gonna need some more like high uh, value stamps in order to get up to $1.55 in the space we have. So I'm gonna go back to my forever stamps because let's see, Three forever stamps. Gotta use my calculator. <laughs> All right. All right. 66 times three, 198. So, so 66 times two is 132 plus another 32, 164, which is plenty. So all I have to do is two forever stamps and then this poppy stamp, and that should be plenty to get to the UK. All right, so let's pick out some other stamps. This one down here would be really pretty to kind of go with the, the red I've already got going, so we'll keep that in mind. But let's see here. Just looking for some flowers or something that would go along with this. <laughs> oh, oh. I only have one and these are worth a lot, but I think it's gonna be worth it. <laughs> so there's one. <laughs> Don't that look so pretty right there? And then I'll get another forever stamp right there and then it'll be enough postage. It's gonna be great. Yeah, these uh, Oscar de la Renta stamps, they were many, many years ago. Does it say what year is on it? It, do I don't, it doesn't even say what year. But um, they are highly sought after. Oh, 68 cents. You are right, 68. But it should still be fine. It should still be fine. It'll be plenty of postage. I forgot about the postage increase and I'm the one that like put out new postage charts for it. For real. <clears throat> okay. One more pretty floral. I guess I could do one of the global ones, but then I wouldn't even need to put any others on it. Oh, these, these are pretty, that would work well. Maybe like this yellow one, maybe keep that in mind. Also I like a butterfly would be really pretty too. Alrighty. Ooh, these are gorgeous over here. Hmm. Yeah, let's do one of those. Some one of the wild orchids, maybe like the yellow to bring that out. Hmm. Let's 
trying to decide which direction are these. <laughs> like, I don't even know. I guess they're like that. Okay. I do like the, that yellow one. Let's use those. Okay. <clears throat> hey, Susan. All right. I'm not putting my stamps away quite yet because I'm going to have to put that one in. All right. So I'm like using this precious stamp. I have to be careful. All right. For this one, it doesn't already have the adhesive on the back. <coughs> so I'm going to grab a paper towel and my spray bottle, which is missing. Oh no, there it is. Okay, I'm just gonna spray into the paper towel. So I have a damp paper towel and then I can press the stamp into that damp paper towel. That will activate the adhesive. that down and then I'm going to put this yellow orchid right there all right so 68 and 68 and 32 pretty sure that should be plenty but just to say to double check my math 68 68 32 168 plenty. In fact, it looks like about 13 cents over what I need. So there's that one. And you know what? The white gel pen is waterproof once it's dry and so is that. So I don't even need to do anything to like waterproof this thing. Awesome. Okay. For these stamps, I'm going to have to do my damp paper towel again. Yes, Lori, I, I realized that. In fact, I mentioned it when I was, I don't know what, I think I was taking it off the mat or something uh, that I could take that off as well. Ooh, that one doesn't want to stick. Let's get more adhesive on the back of that. There we go. Now for that Georgia O'Keeffe poppy stamp. You can also use a glue stick on these uh, vintage stamps if you're not getting, getting them to stick well enough. I've had to do that a few times. Okay, beautiful. All right, let's take a look at the cards with the envelopes. There's our two envelopes. And then we've got the cards as well. All right, there is the finished set of cards. Only took me nearly two hours to do it. So <laughs> that's how it is around here sometimes. Anyway, I've got to run, um, but thank you so much for joining me today. I'll do a quick little spill for those watching the edited replay, and then, and then we'll wrap up for the today. So here are the two envelopes and the two cards that I completed during today's little trial one, trial run with the Better Press, and also using a gel pen with my Cricut Maker 3. That was a lot of fun learning how to do that. Um, links for everything I've used will be down below listed in the supplies. Thanks so much for joining me today. Um, for those of you who are part of my membership community here at YouTube, um, so you're paying just a few extra dollars per month for some additional content. I just want to remind you that we do have a member only live stream coming up on Thursday. It is in the evening. So I hope you can join me for that. And everyone else, you will see that video probably sometime next week or maybe on Friday.
So thanks so much for watching and I will catch you guys next time. All right, for everyone here watching the live, <clears throat> if you have any questions that I didn't catch, um, you know, cause I was in the middle of doing all this, <clears throat> now's the time to put those in. Um, I do know a lot of people in the chat are so helpful and answer some questions for me. So if you did that, thank you so, so much. Let's see here. I'm just going to scroll up. Um, Susan, yes, the, the note for me to you is a better press plate from Spellbinders. Um, do, do, do. Let's see here. <laughs> no, Victoria says, my nephew will be very excited to get you a stamps. He must be a stamp collector. That's awesome. Um, let's see here. Yes, Susan. Susan is asking, is that actual watercolor? Yes. Yes, I watercolor the flowers. Let's see here. Not catching any other questions, but if you had a question that I didn't catch earlier, I'm like scrolling back quite a ways. Um, if you have a question that I didn't see that needs some attention, please repeat it in the comments here. Uh, looks like we're pretty good. All right, thank you so much for joining me today. Um, like I mentioned earlier, for those watching the edited replay, um, if you're a part of my membership community here at YouTube, thank you so much for joining me and supporting me in that way. And we have our second member, member only live stream coming up on Thursday night. So I hope you can join me for that. Um, if you are not a member of my premium membership here at YouTube, it's super easy to join. You can click the join button um, anywhere you're seeing on screen, whether you're on an app or on your computer or whatever, and it will walk you through <clears throat> being either a supporter or a, su or a supporter plus. Um, and you get just a few perks with that each month. And it's a lot of fun. If you need a little more attention, more questions answered during a live stream, that's a great place to be. Um, the last couple of live streams, I think there's only been maybe like 15 to 20 people in the chat. So it's a lot of fun to get a little more attention and chat with each other. Um, I'm not entirely sure what this Thursdays will be, but I think it might be a no line watercoloring. So if you would like to see more like real time instruction with no line watercoloring, um, that's a great place to find it. And uh, when I go to edit that video for just my free subscribers here, um, a lot of that detail will get cut out just for time's sake. So if you really want to know more about no line watercoloring, um, being a part of the membership is a great way to do that. So anyway, thank you all for joining me today, especially at a different time than usual, but, um, I'm glad you're here and thanks so much for joining me and I'll catch you guys in another video very soon.